Hi, I'm Otto Penzler. I'm here at the Mysterious Bookshop in New York City, down in Tribeca. And uh, this is our weekly show about books and authors and collecting. Uh, I do want to start by saying uh, this is going to be the last show for a little while. Uh, we have to take a hiatus for a variety of reasons. One is next week I will be at the London Book Fair, so I wouldn't be able to do it. And after that, the store is going to be closed for several days uh, because a movie is being uh, shot here. Uh, so uh, it won't be possible to do it then. And then we have the Edgars coming up. So we'll have a brief hiatus, um, but what we'll announce on our website and in our weekly newsletter when we're coming back. <clears throat> so, uh, so I'm signing off for a short while with, with one of the really wonderful British writers who wrote real detective stories, Michael Innes. Uh, Michael Innes is a pseudonym of J.I.M. Stewart, James Innes Macintosh Stewart, who wrote several scholarly books and wrote a dozen uh, fiction works, short story collections and novels that were not particularly crime related. Uh, but he's most famous for uh, his series about John Appleby. Uh, Stuart Innes uh, is a, uh, worked for many, many years as a professor at several universities. And uh, his, uh, he, he was not a slacker. He wrote quite a few books, more than 20 in the Appleby series and many uh, crime novels that did not only feature Appleby, but his son Bobby as well. And uh, he would get up in the morning and write for two hours uh, before breakfast. Uh, and then he went to, uh, to do, teach his, uh, his courses. So uh, that kind of a workload, a full professorship, and writing uh, something in the neighborhood of 40 books uh, under his own name and as Michael Innes is a pretty remarkable achievement. Um, he has uh, uh, had a great following when he, when he began. People like Howard Haycraft and Julian Simmons uh, talked about him as being in a class by himself for writing uh, detective novels that were filled with erudition. Uh, Stewart himself was a great scholar of Shakespeare and other literary subjects. And Appleby, his uh, Scotland Yard detective, uh, also uh, was very, very uh, good about uh, spotting literary references uh, in, in crime and criminals. And uh, they are often brought in. One of the books that he wrote was, is, was a, a very famous book for him called Hamlet Revenge. Uh, and was obviously based on Shakespeare's play. Uh, he, he started with, uh, with Golantz, Victor Golantz, and stayed with him throughout his entire career for all of his crime novels. Uh, Golantz is uh, remarkable for the cheapness with which he produced books and dust jackets. They are singularly unattractive, unless you really like yellow. If you're a huge fan of yellow, here's what they look like. Sp sparing no expense on dust jackets, they look like this, and this, and this. The creative art department at Golands was a, a sight to behold. But one of the great things about Golands editions is it is impossible not to know a first printing. Uh, because they were religious about showing when they had a second printing. They didn't say first edition, but they always showed a, a second printing and further. And I'll show you an example of that later. Um, here's the earliest book. One of the problems, I can't show you as many books as I would like to, uh, because Innes is very collected. And so when I have good early books by, uh, by Innes, uh, they tend to go out of here very, very quickly. So this is a 1940 first edition, and there's the copyright page. And as you see, there is no indication of a later printing. 
Now, uh, this is uh, this is a quite a scarce book. There came both mist and show. It's very good copy. It's seventy five dollars, uh, which is the most expensive Michael Innes that I have in the store at the moment. Um, I'll take this one with which has Appleby right on the cover, so you can see that it's an Appleby novel, and. Um, they date the title page, and then the copyright page. As I as I said, there is no indication of a reprint, so you know it's a first edition. Now these are fine copies in dust jacket, uh, but they're very inexpensive. Uh, it's fifteen dollars. It's because they're later. Um, the early books are are really hard to find. The later books are not so hard to find. Here's another. This is from 76, and you see the copyright page, which I can't see because it's, it, I have the covers in the way, but I know that it doesn't show a, uh, a later printing. Uh, they get pretty boring. They're almost, that's $20, fine copy. So is this, a fine copy. It's also $20. And the same thing, there's the copyright page and no indication of a later printing. So I can show you all of these books, uh, and but what I'm telling you is as boring as the covers. So I won't do that. Uh, I'll just do one more just to show you the copyright page. Yes, and look, no reprint information. However, come to this and the copyright page this is the publisher's file copy, by the way, and it's stamped that way so that uh, that's why it's in perfect condition. They had it in their, in their files. So there's the date on the, on the title page, but you go to the copyright page and shows the first printing and that it's been reissued. That's about the most exciting thing I can tell you about the Golan's editions. Uh, and Innes, for reasons of his own, stayed with this cheap publishing house for his entire career, which began in 1934, by the way, and went into the early 80s. So <clears throat> he was loyal to the end. He also was loyal to Dodd Mead, uh, his American publisher. Uh, I don't have, I hardly have anything here uh, Again, because uh, a lot of the books are not in print, so even the the, unex the inexpensive early copies, they're inexpensive, but it, but everybody buys them as soon as they get in. Uh, and Dodd Mead uh, has always indicated second printings when they're when they're done. This is eight and a half dollars, just you know, uh, as a reading copy. So. Uh, I wish I had more exciting books to show you, but every Golan edition looks exactly like what you just saw and has the same information on the copyright page. So I'm just reminding you, this is the last show that we're going to do for a, a while, and we'll announce it when we're ready to come back. Thanks very much for watching.